Welcome back. And if you are new here, I am Annika and I am here to demystify DIY and inspire and empower you to build all the projects and use all of the power tools confidently. And today we are diving into the most essential power tool the power drill, which is really an essential part of your toolbox, whether you are building furniture or you are adding curtain rods to the wall or installing a shelf, you definitely need a power drill to make adding any kind of fastener super quick easy and efficient. Now a power drill does seem like it would be a really straightforward and easy power tool to operate, which it is. But do you know that there are a whole bunch of functions and settings in here that actually make operating that drill much more efficient and easy. And unfortunately, a lot of people use their power drill without understanding all of these functions and then end up struggling with a stripped screw or a screw that just will not go in any further in spite of there being space for it to go. So we are going to dive into every single thing you need to know about this power drill. But before we get started, I do have a power tool simplified guide where I talk about all the key functions and features of all of the basic seven power tools. And you can get that with the link in the description below. Now let's talk about all things power drill. So let's talk about the parts of a drill driver. Now, the first thing up here is the chuck. And when you screw it or unscrew it, it opens and closes this bit holder. And this is where you insert your driver or your drill bit. Right here, we have a bunch of numbers and we will go into all of those details in a little bit. Right here, we also have the speed setting. We have one and number two. Here we have what is called the trigger. And this is actually a variable speed trigger. So the amount that you press decides how fast or slow this spins. Right here is a tab that decides the direction of the spin. So does it spin clockwise or counterclockwise? And a lot of the power drills actually have an LED light, they can have a light right here or right here just to make it a lot easier to see where you are driving or drilling your holes or screws. This right here is the battery. So it's a cordless power drill. So we have a removable battery down here. Now, before we start using the drill, let's talk about safety. The number one thing you wanna always do is wear your safety glasses. And this is because as you are drilling into material, it can fly out, or even if you are using it to drive a screw, sometimes the screw can fly off. So you always want to protect your eyes and wear safety glasses and obviously like any other power tool, you never want to have loose hair, clothing, or jewelry. Also, don't ever use gloves as you are using your drill because your gloves can get stuck in the drill bit or the screw and it can cause injury. And lastly, and very importantly, always, always want to hold your drill firmly. You want to have a firm grip on your drill because as you are drilling into things or applying fasteners, you're producing a lot of rotational forces and sometimes it can be easy to twist your wrist and hurt your wrist. So always have a firm grip, always hold it nice and strong. Okay, let's talk about the basic operation of a drill driver. First up, this is where you load a drill or a driver bit. Now to load the bit, you need to open this up and to do that, you can rotate the chuck right here. It's tightening right now, or you go clockwise and it opens it up. And you simply add your bit in there and close it around it until it locks. Once it locks, you'll hear some clicking sound. Now here's another feature. When you press this in from the right to the left, the drill is going to go clockwise and that means that it is driving in. And when you click this from the left to the right, it's going to go counterclockwise, which means that you're pulling things out. Now, one cool feature is that if you are driving it, 
and you hold the chuck and you press the trigger, the bit holder is going to close like this. Or if you go backwards, it's going to open up. Now, say it's open and you have a driver bit that you need to load. Now, if you load it in here and you went with your hand, it's gonna take a long time to close it around it. Instead, here's what you can do. So you hold the bit in there, hold the chuck with your fingers, and then you can run the drill bit until it tightens around the drill bit. Now, once it tightens around the drill bit, you do wanna be careful because sometimes it can tighten really quick and it can twist your wrist. Instead, you wanna get it to just about the right size and then just use your fingers and tighten it and you're good to go. Let's talk about all of these numbers that you see on the drill right here. And I have found that a lot of times, and including me when I was starting out, a lot of times as beginners, we don't really pay a lot of attention to all of these settings that are on the drill. We know that we just need to drive it in by pressing this button and drive things out by pressing that button and we try to use it. But trust me, once you understand all of these settings, it's just gonna make using your drill so much easier. Okay, so let's start talking about these numbers right here on the drill first. Now, these numbers usually range from one all the way up until 15. And now these numbers are essentially gears and they are going to decide how much torque the drill is going to exert. So what is torque? Torque is the rotational force. So it decides how hard it's going to drive or rotate the driver to push the fastener in. Let me show you how that works. So we're going to start with the torque setting at five and drive the screw in. Now watch as I drive the screw. When it hits the torque limit, the motor is going to disengage and it's going to stop driving the screw in. Watch. So you see right here, as soon as the motor disengaged, you hear a clicking sound and it's not going to go in any further. Now we are going to change the torque limit and go to seven. So it drove the screw in further because it had more torque, but now it's disengaged the motor again because it has hit the limit. So we're gonna go to nine. Now it's almost gone through, but it's still a little high, but it has hit the torque limit. So we're gonna go to 11. Not enough. Let's do 13. So now it's below the surface, it's nice and tight, and it has hit the torque limit. So you may be wondering, what torque do you need to start with? Well, I usually start around seven, nine, and then as needed, I go up to where I need it to be. If you start with a much higher torque setting, it will push your screw right through and you might end up overdriving your screw. Now, if you look close here, after 15, you end up at this right here, which is essentially the symbol of a drill. Now, this is a setting that you want to use when you are using your drill driver to drill holes. Now, the difference between this and the torque settings is that this does not have a torque limit. So it does not disengage the motor. It keeps driving the screw and it keeps going through, which is what you need if you are drilling into materials. But you definitely do not want to use this when you are driving your fasteners because it's just gonna drive your fastener through. It's not going to stop and you're going to end up overdriving your fasteners. Let me show you. So I have it set at the drill setting and I am going to go ahead and drive this in. 
So you see it went right through, it did not stop, unlike this one where you where I had control of how deep it was going. In here you have absolutely no control on how deep it goes and you can easily overdrive your fasteners. So never ever drive fasteners with your drill set to the drill setting right here. Now, if you are drilling into wood or into wall, you do want it to be at the drill setting because you do not want to disengage your motor as, so as soon as your drill bit hits any resistance. Okay, we have one more setting to cover and that is this switch right here, which is one and two. Now, one is for a low speed high torque, which is what you want to use when you are driving fasteners like screws, etc. Number two is high speed medium torque, which is what you want to use when you are drilling into material. So remember, anytime you are drilling into something like wood or drywall, you want to set it at two and you want to set it at the drill setting right here. And anytime you are driving, you want to set it at one and you want to set up your torque. And like I said, I always start at around seven or nine and then I go up from there if I need to. Now to drill a hole into either a wall or wood or metal or concrete, the number one thing you want to do is pick the right drill bit. Drill bits come in various types. Most general purpose drill bits work well for drywall or wood. You do have special drill bits for metal and concrete and masonry, etc. So pick the type of drill bit that you need for your material. So we are using wood right now, so I'm going to use just the general purpose drill bits. And then you want to pick the right size that you need for your application. Now, if you are making a hole in the wall for an anchor, etc., the packaging will tell you exactly which drill bit size you need to use. But if you're trying to make a pilot hole in wood or even in the drywall, you always want to go one size smaller than the size of your screw. So let's make a hole in the wood. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the drill bit into my drill. It's nice and tight in there. It's locked. Now I am going to set this to two and I am going to rotate this all the way until I get to the drill symbol. So this is what you need. You want to set it to two and you want to have the drill symbol showing. Next up, we are going to hold this right here. Put on our safety glasses. Now, as you are drilling into wood, drilling does need a lot more power. So you want to always hold the back of your drill so you can make sure it stays stable. You want to make sure that your wrist is nice and stable and you have a nice firm grip. Now, sometimes there can be walking out of the drill as you are drilling, which basically means that the drill starts to move away from the point where you want to drill. So keeping your hand down like this, applying a tiny bit force downwards is going to keep the drill from walking out. So you kind of push into the point that you want to make a hole in and then you slowly start the drill. Now one of the important things is to make sure that your drill always remains perpendicular to the surface that you're drilling into. Whether it is wood or wall, you always want to be perpendicular to the surface. Otherwise your hole going in will not be straight and then whatever fastener you put in will not go in straight. So you always want to make sure that your drill stays perpendicular to the board. And there is the hole. Okay, now let's talk about driving a fastener into your material. So into wood or wall or stud, the process stays the same. Number one, you want to pick the right drill bit for your fastener and you can buy an entire set of different types of drill bits. And the most common being obviously the Phillips head. But these days you also get the star heads which actually are great because they prevent the screw from stripping and they give you a nice strong grip on the fastener. So this one right here that I'm using actually uses a T20 drill bit which is a star shaped drill bit. So this is the one that I am using right here. So you also get these bit holders, they come with the set normally. So 
you can put these tiny things into the bit holder. It's magnetic and it holds it in place. Now we are going to load the drill bit into our drill. Now we have to set this switch to number one and then we're going to go to a torque setting that is good for driving the fastener into the material. Now remember the torque setting is how much rotational force it's applying. So if you are driving into a soft material or if you are assembling store-bought furniture like IKEA furniture or you know basically manufactured wood you probably want to start with a really really low torque because it can be really easy to overdrive screws into it and then it won't be as strong. So you always want to start with a low torque. I am using a two by four. So I am going to start at around, let's say, let's start at six. And I am going to be using this fastener. You want to place the fastener firmly where you want it to go. Now this is a self-tapping fastener and I do not recommend not pre-drilling. You always want to pre-drill because if you don't pre-drill your wood is going to crack but right now I'm going to show you how to do this without pre-drilling because if you are using this on studs you probably are not pre-drilling. So we are going to firmly seat the bit into the fastener. Now you always want to make sure that your bit sits nice and tight in a fastener. Now if it does not sit firmly in place it is going to slip and it can actually strip your screw head. So we want to make sure that our drill bit is the right size for the screw head and it fits nice and tight and snug. Now I'm going to hold this in place and I'm going to slowly start the drill. Now you want to make sure that you have good pressure, linear pressure going down because you do not want the screw to move like that. So we're going to hold this in place and we're going to put a tiny bit of pressure, firm pressure from our hand onto the drill. And we start it. Once the screw starts to go into the board, we can go ahead and use our other hand and hold it right here on the drill. Now once again you want to make sure that you are going perpendicular to it because if you don't once again you can end up stripping the screw and of course the screw will not go in straight. So we are going to hold that straight down and now I can make sure that the screw is nice and straight and screw it in. Of course, I don't want to damage my workbench, so I'm going to put another board underneath it. And now we are going to go ahead and screw it all the way in. See, that's also something you want to always remember. You always want to clamp the board that you are screwing into. I'm just going to use my hand right now to hold it in place. But we have hit the torque limit, so we're going to increase the torque. Again, we hit the torque limit. Let's increase it. Oh, this one's taking. And we're good. And that's how you use a drill to add a screw into any material. Now there's one more tool that falls in the same category as the drill driver and that is the impact driver and when you are starting out impact drivers can be confusing. I mean do you really need an impact driver when you have a drill driver? The short answer to that probably not if you're just starting out but this is like a step up especially when you are driving a lot of fasteners into hard material. Now the way the impact driver works is completely different. The mechanism of the motor is completely different from the drill driver. Now the drill driver essentially exerts rotational force, right? It just rotates. If it hits resistance, the motor disengages and that's about it. On the other hand, the impact driver not only exerts rotational force, it can also exert linear force. So as you are screwing a fastener in and it hits resistance, it's going to stop and then it's going to exert linear force to push it in. So it's exerting a rotational and a linear force, hence the term impact driver. Impact drivers are really, really useful when you are adding a lot of fasteners or specifically when you're trying to remove a stripped screw. So do you need both of them? Well, it's absolutely great to have both of them. They both have their own applications, but if you're just starting out a drill driver 
works just fine. There is everything you need to know about a power drill and an impact driver to use them efficiently and make the most of them. There are many different brands in the market and this one happens to be my favorite right now. It's nice and compact and small and light and it's still powerful enough. But I do have this Milwaukee as well, which was actually my very first power drill that I bought in 2011 still going nice and strong the battery is still going nice and strong so that's a great one as well and i will add a link to all of these in the description below and don't forget to grab your power tool simplified guide from the description as well thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please do hit that subscribe button i have a whole bunch of new projects and tool tutorials coming your way including a table saw and a router. And now I think you will also like these tutorials. I'll see you next time. Bye.